Okay, this is a video for the Thea Audio Monarch. This is a tribrid. It has a single dynamic driver, six balance armature, and two electrostatic drivers. It's absolutely gorgeous. The cable is cable is nuts. I got the 64 Audio Neo right there with its upgrade cable, which is like $499 for the cable, I think. I got it. Thank you to 46 Audio in New York. This cable's much better than that. Um, this would be the flagship, or not, price-wise, $729. Personally, my favorite is the Clairvoyance, which, uh, if you look at the graph of the set that I'm reviewing today, it, it, it it's gorgeous. It's got traits that's similar to the L9, but a little little bit toned down it's got the notch around six it's got post AK info it's doing everything right the only thing look at what I did here instead of the scribbling let me go ahead and close this graphs are great music is what we're here for though instead of doing the scribbles I decided to go ahead and do this online all the time and then I'll just print it out so I can have some kind of it's easier to read maybe easier for you guys to follow and I'm just selecting this says awful that's what this is. Poor, decent, average, good, great, excellent. And this is the music that I use. Bass. Let's go ahead and start with the bass, okay? Hold on just a second. Okay, let's go ahead and start the bass. This is Marvin Gaye right here, and the track that I started with was Sexual Healing, and I put that in the great department. I thought it sounded great. I enjoyed the playback. A lot I thought it was excellent and before I got out of the base because I actually start in the same order that you're looking at kind of it's an OCD or it makes me feel like I'm organized to kind of do like this so Marvin Gaye started first everything sounded fine and then you can see the the green bar moves to the left which is not great and that's violent femmes please do not go and that sounded good that's a four-string bass guitar it sounded okay um, eat a dead grasshopper the four major chords of a four string bass guitar a little bit a little bit different um what do graphs tell you well i color coded this like i color coded that and just noticed that as i'm saying this because this is the sub bass it's about 60 hertz and then this is the mid bass to about 330 and then we go to the treble this is coming down when it's hitting the sub bass. It's already on its way down. When I usually do bass boosts for something like the EX1000, I usually boost at 55 hertz, just before the sub bass, so the bandwidth, the Q, I'm gonna be rolling in probably around 250, or a little bit later. That's the way I usually do my own EQ bass. So this would be if I were doing the EX-1000, which has a relatively flat mids and bass, I wouldn't be centering my hit around 30, roughly. This this is maybe 3 dB off right here, this sub bass. This should probably be trajecting straight in. But that would put the peak at about 30. For four-string bass guitars, if you're thinking, oh, shit, man, I thought he was going to love this, that's the set I'm going to hype. That's the clairvoyance. That's the one that's got bass that sounds great. That's the one that's going to get the enthusiastic recommendation. If this set had come without the clairvoyance with it, I would be hyping and saying that this is the finest treble and mids that anything Thea has put out for sale yet. It's it, the, the packaging, the quality of the cable, the whole thing, all things considered, it's the best set. This person, this reviewer, likes bass, so I would lean more towards the L3 or the L9, though this would be technically superior probably just the musicality of the L series seems to match me more however the clairvoyance is an improvement on the L series and that did come with this so that's why there's this never had its moment in the sun other people will get it and love it it'll be other people though I think it's a great set but I'm looking at the reason why right now so there's the graph it's peaking way in the sub bass by the time you get to where the sub bass cross into mid bass it's already everything else that's 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 called a long porch. That's what I call that anyway. Sometimes you have something that looks like right about here to here. It's called a short porch. Like the mids are kind of really short, flat. The gain is about eight. It's got it settles down. It, nothing is every peak is 
submissive to the one prior to it. So this following peak is lower than it, and then it drops lower, and it keeps its energy, stuff like... I'll get into that. So bass, guitar, four strings, sounded average. And kick drum sounded average. Everything else sounded fantastic. Just that. So I'm going to get into mids, treble, and OCD stuff, but it started in the bass like it always does, and uh, it was instant. When I looked at this graph, if you go look at my community channel, I put this up, and then I said, "Oh, you know, holy shit!" And the uh, the clever ones was like an afterthought. That's how, that's how visually stimulating graphs can be, and kind of create a bias. And I was biased towards this because of this graph, and then I started listening, and instantly because of the way I proceed, I thought, "Shut! Wait a second. And then I got the clairvoyance, even though I told people I wouldn't do that till the next day. And there it is. And it had pretty much everything else. So I was also of the belief that this was going to be the king. Bias. The graph is gorgeous. That That's, that's fucking brilliant. Let, let me take a moment to say that a company that's started by a seller that observes all the mistakes that other companies make is kind of a like of a head start. And that they've had their little stumbles, but not like I've seen through other companies. Absolutely brilliant. I'm I'm so stoked because I work with that seller all the time, and I'd like to be really enthusiastic about this set, but I can't be. But what I will be excited about is the clairvoyance, and that'll match my history and people who are familiar with the music I listen to and the words that I say. Well, that'll fit the puzzle easily. This doesn't, and I'm looking at the visual. Though it looked stunning at first, listening to it is a different thing. And other people's and other people's libraries. I'm giving you the conclusion in the base. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Um, so I think it's sub bass focused. And if you've got sets that are like that, and I think this looks kind of similar to the U12, it's hump, but it's using a dynamic driver. It might be kind of, I, I think people who like that might want to give this a try. I, I like a little bit more mid bass myself personally. So that's the base. Okay, the mids. The mids on this are excellent. Mm, I put great for pretty much everything. Dire Straits, Sultan of Swing. Let's go check that out. Right here. It sounded fantastic. It had enough low end because the, the basis is just kind of pinning it down. And it was enough. I wasn't really focusing on the basis, but it sounded energetic enough for this the whole rest of this replay to be excellent. The mids and especially the transition and the treble are brilliant. Really, really good. Everything, Dire Straits, Sultans of Swing, Fleetwood Mac, Go Your Own Way. I'm listening to all the vocals in the Fleetwood Mac track. Doobie Brothers, Taken to the Street. I'm listening to the bass, the vocals, the bass, the vocals, the bass, the vocals, and the bass and Mike McDonald start do going at the same time. And you can kind of hear it. This, this does that good, actually, because they're... The mid bass is already corrected before it hits the mids. So the, that that actually sounded quite good. That's why it's not maybe dinged back like it might be in future videos. Meatloaf Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Um, a singer that's speak singing, singing, scream singing. Also a female that's doing the same. I believe they're both trained in opera. If I checked Wikipedia in a previous video, and they, I think they were. The, the, the range of both of them is very impressive, and I, I had a blast. I, I love Meatloaf. Um... So the mids on this sounded excellent. I don't have any complaints. It graphs very clean and clear, and it there's no haze or anything that would be related to some kind of overstimulation of the low frequency because it, there's simply not enough there for this personal reviewer, for me. It's the clairvoyance. This is going to be where you look at my library, you look at your own set, you find a graph, maybe Critical's got, of what your favorite set is, and then you look at that and you think... You know, fuck that dude. I'm that's that's my thing. Well, good for you. I gotta be. I'm saving the juice of my what I love and enthusiastically endorse for the better of the two, for me. And I put my library up in colors, and over here and over here. The music is all around you at all times. There's no question about what I'm talking about, like texturing and layering. What the fuck is he actually talking about? Uh. A, I'm talking about the kick drum and 
when the levee breaks sounding lacking. I'm talking about four string bass guitar in Violent Femmes, Please Do Not Go, sounding not ideal to me. I'm talking about Paradise by the Dashboard Light sounding exceptional. Like, I'm being very specific with you. So the, tr the mids, there's no issue whatsoever. So I'll go ahead and end this one now. And we'll do treble next. Okay, let's do the treble, which this does quite well. Starting with Pink Floyd Money. I put this in excellent category, but for some reason it's not showing right there. Let me go ahead. I'll ah, leave it there. Boston, more than a feeling. I, I both thought they were excellent. The, this is basically a cash register. It's repeating like somebody hitting the open and throwing the change and it keeps repeating. That can get really intense on a lot of stuff. Like too much so. No, the EX-1000 is a... This particular track would be... I could go through the album fine, but I wouldn't listen to this again and again. But I did on this set because I was trying to, like, th that sounded really damn good. Do it again. Sounded really damn good. Like, I never... And then I thought, I'm not getting fatigued by this. That's excellent. Marked it as such. Um, More Than a Feeling should actually be an excellent, too. I put it in great. The Tom Schultz, I just did a... Linked up to a video of him, and he's an engineer from MIT. Like, fucking genius. And the... Uh, some of the sound effects that they got back were mm, Pink Floydish, like very, very unique. And this set does that very well. Metallica Fade to Black was great. Um, ELO Telephone Line was great. Pimp C Coming Up, um, Sweet, Sweet Jim Jones Story. Um, Earth, Wind and Fire September was excellent. Mm, the treble on this is really good. People who are like treble but not too intense, wait for more reviews to come out on this because this is really... A detail head. The symbols on this are great. They they really are really really good. Um, so, its best performance actually was in the treble. If I'm just looking at this, the mids were consistently great. There, there was no problem with the mids, and the uh, treble went from great to excellent depending on what I was listening to. Some tracks emphasize and have more stuff in the upper register, so I'm listening for that. I'm listening for it to sound as I remember it and not too intense because that would be I find this to be less intense than the S8F and the Spring 2 that I just reviewed um, that that's kind of easy actually so I like this a lot that's the treble final stop you know what let me do OCD and then I'll do conclusions the OCD is the Michael Jackson beep on want to be starting something it's the left channel it's a minute 27 to a minute 33 I think I could catch it on this I'm not 100% sure so I put that as average. The finger snaps in Blister in the Sun by um, Violent Femmes was great. The crowd and the free bird from One More From the Road was excellent. Uh, Pink Floyd gate announcement um, on the run. She's talking about getting your passports ready for flight to Rome. It was very, very, very clear. D. Uh, Randy Rhodes finger slides and taps and pulls on the little classic guitar solo he did on I think it's Diary of a Madman is it oh it's Blizzard of Oz my miss all of those sounded excellent so in treble and the OCD stuff went well the mids went consistently good and the bass was depending on what you listen to let me go ahead and give conclusions okay conclusion for the monarch if it hadn't been sent with another set that I think is the best that Thea has made I would probably really be more up tempo and positive about this but it, it did come in with another set and I did listen to both of them next to each other because one of them seemed to be lacking something that I need and when I look closer at the graph people can say oh that's that's a fantastic graph that's awesome that's it's flat before it hits the mids and then like I said I think in the bass section when I do an EQ for the EX1000 by Sony if it, there's anybody out there use a PEQ at 55 Hertz I'm actually EQing right at the sub bass and mid bass crossover so my trajectory would be different than this I'd probably be elevated and coming in at a slope I I know I would actually at 250 this lack of bass here is noticeable 
with four string bass guitars and also kick drum. It, if I hadn't listened to that set, I'd just be thinking, this is the audiophile way to go. And then I listened to the clairvoyance and I thought, no, that's an audiophile actually. Like faithful reproduction and it sounds, it's not bassy, it just plays the bass it's supposed to. Like the kick drum, like the four string bass guitar, critical instruments from my personal library. Do I recommend this set? I do because I know the people that are watching my channel have libraries that are different from me and they want stuff that has um, high resolution, uh, good build quality, a nice cable, and presented well. Mm, I think this does that. However, I'm going to wreck so time. I'm going to hold off on saying anything about this. I'm going to do a comparison with other tribrids. So I'm going to hold off on wrecking this. That's the set that I'm going to wreck. I'm going to wreck that strongly, and I'm going to use the same song. So I'm going to explain the difference between this set and that set, and then you can decide. Knowledge, whether you agree with it or not, is information and power, and you can use it. doesn't matter that you agree with it. You, other people have already commented, I don't listen to the same music that he does, but I can still extrapolate lots of info because I'm looking at music, and he's talking about stuff specifically. I can go listen to that. You don't have to like Led Zeppelin. It's a kick drum. That's it. You just listen to the kick drum. You don't need to like Led Zeppelin. You don't have to like the Violent Femmes. It's a bass guitar. I'm talking about the bass guitar in Violent Femmes. Please do not go. You don't need to like them, but you can check that and listen to something that's graphed like this and think, I'm fine with that. Mm, this would be a, an option. Or you might listen to something that might be a little more traditional in its bass going a little bit more and then think, I hear what he's saying. So my conclusion, I guess, is that this is a fantastic set. It looks like a looks like a canary. Looks just like one. It's absolutely gorgeous. The cable is pimp as hell. Very nice. It's the best thing that they've ever put out cable wise. Uh that's the the tins, all of the stuff that they've been associated with. This is the, the most boss cable. It's nuts. People said in the unboxing, holy shit, that cable. Yeah, holy shit. It it really is dope, man. And I can compare it with the 64. I'll, that review is going to be coming later. This one first, then I'm going to do the clairvoyance, then I'm going to do the 64, and then I'm going to do a tri-bridge shootout and compare it because i got a bunch of them. So that's my conclusion. Stay tuned. I'm out.